But the main thing, if you're looking to write a book, get ready to lock yourself in a room for, you know, six months for a couple hours and really put in the work because, and, and ignore a lot of people in, in your life if you want it to actually come from you. And I highly recommend you take the time to do it yourself. And you can use a third party service to embellish some things, but no matter what, you know, it's, it's you at the end of the day, you're gonna have to read it. You have to go back through, you're gonna have to edit the whole thing. John, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for making some time to be here. Yeah, Trent, really excited to be on. Thanks for having me on today. No problem. So for the folks in my audience who are not yet familiar with you or your work, let's start there. Who are you and what do you do? Nice to meet you, audience. My name is John Lincoln. I, I run Ignite Visibility. I've been running it for uh, seven and a half years. My whole mission is to help people through digital marketing, use profits to reinvest in client success, employee success in the community. So we drive a mission-driven uh, you know, digital marketing agency here in San Diego, and I, I love what I do. Multi-channel digital marketing strategy, it's my pleasure to help uh, you know, people become number one in the space or help people who are already number one in the space uh, reach their goals. And your company's been on the Inc. 5000 a couple of times now, I believe, right? Yeah, pretty proud of that. Um, we've we've had great growth and we've been working at it for a while. We're a four-time Inc. 5000 company. We've made it the last uh, four years in a row. And we do the same type of stuff that we do for clients for ourselves. So, you know, we invest a lot in digital and we really enjoy, uh, you know, kind of scaling our own marketing efforts and using those same systems and strategies we come up with for clients. Okay. So the agency space, super competitive. Um, you've got to really do some different things to set yourself apart and achieve levels of growth like you've achieved. And so what I'm hoping to uncover for the audience in this interview is some of the unique things that you've done, because they may be applicable to folks who aren't necessarily running agencies. Obviously they would be applicable to someone running an agency, but also to other people running other forms of online business. So I know when we talked in our pre-interview, you talked about how you like to do one big thing per year. What do you, what do you mean by that one big thing per year? Yeah, good question. Well, yeah, it is competitive, um, but you know, there's pain points in, in the industry and competitive spaces don't scare me. I've been, you know, going into competitive spaces for a while. That's, that's what gets me excited, a good challenge. So that point, what's one big thing per year? Well, I mean, everybody should have a quarterly marketing campaign or, or an annual marketing campaign that they're putting a ton of effort into. You know, from, from my perspective, we've done it for Ignite and clients, but you know, I've, I had a, a book I wrote one year called Digital Influencer. The next year I made SEO the movie. The next year I made another uh, book uh, called The Forecaster Method and also Social Media Marketing, the movie. So two movies, two books, one big thing a year, one big marketing push. You know, you mix in there, you know, an industry study every quarter, um, you know, some, some other types of marketing campaigns that get your target demographic involved. And you've always, always have something kind of new and exciting to talk about. And so that's what it's all about for me, just always keeping the brand relevant, exciting, and uh, it's something I always try to do. I mean, even this week, you know, I'm going to be doing um, some recording for, um, you know, some events that we're doing with uh, Microsoft and Yelp and Google. So just always kind of keeping the brand top of mind is, is really important. So for folks, let's talk about the book for a little bit. Um, most people, so I think it's fair to say that most people think writing a book would be this overwhelming task that they would never have the time or the bandwidth to do. And they might wonder, well, what would I write about? What do I have to say? And so forth. Yeah. And there's, there's hacks in the world for that. There are ghost writers, there are book in a box services and so forth. How did you go about writing your book and, and why did you write your book? So that's a good question. There are services that'll do the whole thing for you. I mean, there, there's a million different ways to approach it. The first time I tried to use a ghostwriter and give them an outline and I had to go back in and rewrite the whole thing and it, and it took so much longer. So the first book was on how to be a digital influencer, how to become an influencer in the space. I was working on the same problem myself. I had kind of cracked the code on some level. I wanted to take it to the next level and I wanted to help clients and subject matter experts, um, you know, with that same strategy. So 
you know, I use the book as, as a learning experience and then also bringing my own experience to people who want to learn. And it's a very, very good process for um, getting ideas out there to the world. The second book was on forecasting. And I believe that that's one of the biggest pain points in digital marketing right now is, you know, what's reliable forecasting look like? How do you set up reliable tracking? How do you take all the guesswork out of digital marketing? How do you make it so that digital marketing is not really digital marketing? It's actually future cash flow that you can actually see exactly your CPAs now and then what that looks like in the future with the amount of budget that you're going to invest in that. So I'm, I'm just obsessed with that. I'm obsessed with being able to go to a client and hit daily, weekly, quarterly goals based off of our exact um, strategies and, and spends and tie that all together. So that's what I did with the forecaster method is really, you know, kind of crack the code on that. And, and we really did a, a good job there of um, bringing that program to clients. But the main thing, if you're looking to write a book, get ready to lock yourself in a room for, you know, six months for a couple hours and really put in the work because, and, and ignore a lot of people in, in your life if you want it to actually come from you. And I highly recommend you take the time to do it yourself. And you can use a third party service to embellish some things, but no matter what, you know, it's, it's you at the end of the day, you're going to have to read it. You have to go back through, you're going to have to edit the whole thing. If you're going to, you know, do an audio version, you're going to have to either do it yourself or you're going to have to, you know, find somebody to read it for you. It's, it's a huge undertaking. So. Okay. So you didn't take any of the shortcuts. You did lock yourself in a room for six months for a couple of hours each day and devote that time to writing the book. Is that right? I did. Yeah. In, in both cases I did. Um, and you know, I've got a journalist background. I was an editor at a magazine for four and a half years. So, um, you know, I've, I've been a writer and a blogger and, and essentially, you know, you just lay out all, all the chapters. You can pull in some third party stuff. If you've written blog posts in the past, you know, you've got mm -hmm. some content that's out there. You've done presentations, you know, I had done some industry studies, I pull in all that data, but I guess maybe one tip would be if you've done a ton of content marketing or you're going to do a ton of content marketing, you know, why not align that with a book that you're going to write? So I did a little bit of that. Like I tried to, with both books, take the best of everything that I had done and, and then also, you know, try to align the content marketing strategy I was going to be doing in the future with the book chapters. And then you can kind of, you know, wrap it all together. So that's a good little hack for you, I suppose. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what people would learn when they read your second book, because I think that that is, there's going to be some really great nuggets in there that people can take away. Uh, and, and hopefully some of them might even go and buy your book. So you talked about treating digital marketing as a way of forecasting the future, if I understood what you explained correctly. So can you give us an overview of, of what that means and what the structure looks like and how to actually break that down and make it actionable in a business? Yeah. So, you know, I was a teacher of analytics at UC San Diego for, you know, seven or, or eight years in the digital marketing program. So I just became obsessed with Google Analytics, right? So in, in analytics, you have mediums and sources. A medium is a bucket. Underneath that is a source. A source is a specific piece of traffic like Facebook or email marketing. And essentially what you can do is you can look at audience size, click-through rate, conversion rate, cost per acquisition, and then you can build an entire business model around your spend around your efforts and then you can build a forecasting system so that you know if you turn the dial a little bit you can increase the amount of input into your funnel and then you can see as that user in those those buckets of users go further and further down in the funnel where's the break in the chain and if there's a break in the chain you can fix it so the book really teaches you how to do all that and it teaches you how to not only set that up and set that up from a clear reporting perspective, but also how to convert that traffic for less over time. Because I believe that the future of the web is building audiences, but then also finding ways to convert those audiences for less because it's going to become, you know, basically a land grab for how much, you know, all these different people can spend. But if you have the best conversion process, then you're going to win in that game. So that's kind of what the book goes over. It also goes over, um, you know, what a program looks like from start to finish. 
So if you're just getting started, you're a $1 million business. It talks about what that type of program looks like all the way up to, you know, multi-billion dollar business. And I've had the tremendous opportunity throughout my career to see every single stage in the journey mm -hmm. for clients from when they start to when they become these full blown billion dollar companies. You know, they've got athletes, they're doing billboards, they're doing sporting events, they're doing all this stuff. And, and it's very much the same framework that you see within this type of journey from start to finish. So we go over that in the book as well. So, you know, it's really kind of like the modern day CMO's guide and digital marketer's guide and entrepreneur's guide to, you know, going into digital, measuring it correctly, forecasting, and then just plotting the, pl the program from start until finish. So let's assume, because I want to try and give as much value to the audience as I can, even if they don't buy your book, let's assume for a moment that the book was no longer available and you were sitting in a room with a client talking to them about how to develop the strategy for their digital marketing over the coming year, what would be some of the things that you would be focused on very initially? Would it be coming up with your promotional and editorial calendar and laying out the cadence of your promotions or does it start someplace else? Well, we could go through an exercise. So the first question I would say is, you know, what, what are your goals, right? Yep. So give me a, what's a goal that maybe you would want to hit in a quarter? Okay, well, we'll use my software company as a guinea pig. So right now we are at a point where we are making some, we're, we're, we've created a product for a new target audience. Mm -hmm. And we have enough historical data to know that certain aspects of the product are absolutely going to resonate, but there's some uncertainty because we haven't created exactly this product for exactly this target market. So we need to figure out our go-to-market strategy. So that consists of creating some content, running some ads, running some micro tests, looking at the data. At least that's my perception of what it can, consists of. So mm -hmm. let's use that as our scenario. All right. So let's say that you say, Hey, John, you know, I need to get a thousand signups um, in a month for my new software. Uh, first thing we would do is figure out who your customer is. We would figure out where your customer spends time online. We would look at all your competitors. We would look at all your competitors ad spend by every single network. We would look at their ads. We would look at how much you're spending versus how much they're spending. We would look at the cost per acquisition framework, uh, a projected cost per acquisition framework to get a customer from every single different network, every single different audience. Um, and then we would build a business model for you. So we would say, okay, you want a, a thousand people to sign up. It's going to be a hundred dollars, you know, a sign up. we think for this network, 150 for this network, 300 for this network. If you invest in this, we're going to be able to sh build a dashboard for you. That's going to show you exactly, you know, what that um, acquisition framework looks like. And then you'll have the opportunity to say, okay, this is working, put another 5,000 in this, another 5,000 in this and scale and scale and scale. Of course, along with that, you know, the landing pages, you know, are a very big deal. So there'd be custom landing pages. And then what's really working well now is top of funnel to bottom funnel and then remarketing specific strategies by ad network. So what I mean is, you know, we kind of introduce them in a nice, positive, non-conversion way. And, and I know you know some of this, but just for your listeners, then we nurture them further and further down. And then those bottom funnel ads are really just direct conversion based ads that get them, you know, to that final conversion based landing page. We'll also set up specific landing pages for specific areas in the funnel. So, you know, the top um, of the funnel landing page might be just a webinar or something that captures an email address. We build an email marketing program off of that as well, kind of nurture them further down. Um, and then uh, the post conversion remarketing type of stuff um, is really good if you're doing account based marketing and you're looking to sell them additional products and additional services. I know you have other companies, so that's something that you could look at. But, you know, generally, um, you know, what's nice is we've got a really great tool called Pathmatics. We've got a bunch of other software around here and that allows us to see in any space exactly what the top players are spending. And then we try to build a model for you that's a little bit more niche, high converting, and then allow you to slowly scale, you know, to that, that top area. Um, so that's kind of how we would approach something like that. And is Pathmatics a proprietary tool or is it a tool in the marketplace that you just use? 
Good question. So Pathmatics is a software anybody can sign up for. It's, it's really cool. It's kind of like sim similar web. It shows you all the data that's out there. Um, it's incredibly expensive, uh, but we have a subscription for that. We do have a proprietary tool. It's called our forecaster method. And what it does is it pulls in all the industry benchmarks and then overlays a conversion rate. And it shows you how far off you are from all the other people in the industry and where the delta is for every different type of medium there is in digital marketing and source. So that type of stuff, you know, it just takes all the guesswork out of it. And for me, just doing analytics for so long and, you know, I've been, I've been doing this stuff all day, every day, and it and and really more obsessed with the analytics side than anything. It just it 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 gets me really excited to be able to go to a business and mm -hmm. say, "This is everything everybody else is doing. If you do this, you're going to be right here within range." And then you can decide if you want to have a business model that follows that. And the, the last thing I would say is. One thing that's made us a, a four-time Inc. 5000 company and, and is also in that book is, you know, I have a rule and the rule is I never take my foot off the brake for, for marketing and I try to encourage clients to do the same thing. So if you consistently reinvest, you know, 10%, in your marketing budget and you don't change that, you don't, al you don't, you don't change allocation or anything that's going to consistently drive growth. And then it's just a matter of um, the organization, making sure you're set up operationally to follow. And um, the last point I would say is we've cracked that code too. So now, you know, we have all of our digital tied to our operations. We are, for forecasting, we're able to hire, we're able to do all this stuff way in advance to make sure we never have any lapses or, or any issues. So I, I like talking to business owners about that because it's like, you know, I can kind of help that whole business consulting side too. It excites me. So. And you, with your background in analytics, which is, I would say, not one of my strengths, not anywhere near yours, that's for sure. As you're building what you just described, is Google Analytics the central repository for all the data that you're using to make your decisions. And the reason I ask that question is that in the small amount that I've done so far, I found that oftentimes there's disagreements with what your Facebook reporting is showing you versus your landing page software, what that's showing you versus what Google analytics is showing you. And in other interviews, this has come up and I've, been told that, you know, once you start going across domains in the funnel, data can get lost or things get mixed up and, and then you have less than ideal data to show you whether or not the campaigns that you are running are as successful as you think they are or not. And, and obviously having great data is pretty darn important to making good decisions. Yeah. So you just hit on the number one pain point in marketing right now, which we have worked really hard to crack, which is attribution. So we have an analytics yeah. team. We have a big data team here. We have people who just do custom analysis. You know, so there's there's linear attribution, which is just, you know, you attribute the conversion all to a straight line. There's last click attribution. There's the last click gets all the credit. There's first click attribution. You can remove certain things from an attribution window. You can attribute conversions based off of just a view through and the view through conversions. Like if somebody just watched an ad and they convert, that does not um, integrate well with last click. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can track conversions. There's also like over the top TV and programmatic, and they just will attribute a conversion based off of a pixel on your phone and then your location that will trigger it. So the question then becomes, you know, what type of attribution do you have for different types of businesses? And that's a question that every business needs to figure out for themselves. But generally what I recommend is a weighted attribution model. And then also looking at something called multi-channel funnels. Multi-channel funnels basically shows you every single assisted conversion within the attribution process. Um, and so you know everything that's contributing to the marketing mix. And then also, if you're going to be doing view through conversions, you need to come up with a, a, a brand lift or a conversion lift model as a result of that. So if you get, you know, a thousand view through conversions and you can isolate that data, then you can say, okay, that generally results in about 20% more last click conversions. There's also the option to have like coupon codes on stuff like that, or have a unique URL or, you know, a unique domain. That's what they do with a lot of the TV tracking and radio. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to just break it down a little bit more, what we do is 
we set up the attribution for you. We give you a strategy for your attribution. Um, and then we make sure that it hits all your KPIs. And if you have questions about like some of the weird stuff with the, um, the view through stuff, that's kind of like half baked right now, we, we build a custom report for you, but it's a pain point. So again, I want to follow up on this. The, the, the thing that I'm trying to figure out is, for folks who are not working with you, who are listening to this, looking for actionable takeaways, if they're working on, it's great that you have a method for this, but they'd have to come and sign up and be your client for you to do that method for them. What I'm trying to do, extract from you is, if they're, if they're not, for whatever reason, they're not going to end up working with you, what are some of the best practices that they can do to get attribution figured out? Should they, what are the tools that you recommend? No, I'm not going to tell you. Just kidding. No, I'll tell you. Now, the tools that I, uh, sorry if I didn't <laughs> directly uh, address that. Yeah, so I recommend you do this, listeners. Please do this. Um, use your multi channel funnel report and look at your assisted conversions and your last click conversions as the main things that you look at for your attribution. Also, when you're running ads, tag every single one of your URLs with the URL tagger um, inside of Google so you can see any ads out there. Those, those three things will get you 90% of the way there. And then the last thing that I would recommend is set up a custom dashboard for yourself. You don't need to pay my agency or anybody for any of this stuff. You can do it all on your own if you have the time and, and the energy. There's no question about it. I really like um, Google Data Studio. That's a, a free thing where you can go set up just a beautiful dashboard for yourself. And then I also like Ninja Cat. Ninja Cat is not free, but Ninja Cat, what I love about it is you can, you can kind of go top level to bottom level from your goal. And then you can go medium source all the way down to the ads. And it's, it's got more granularity than data studio. So those would be the things that, that I recommend. And so the assisted conversion and last click conversions and tagging URLs, is that all stuff that you perform in Google Analytics? Yeah, that's all Google Analytics, okay. correct. When would be a use case when someone would be using Google Tag Manager in addition to or in replacement of Google Analytics? Well, you know, Tag Manager is a way to deploy uh, analytics, right? So okay. um, Tag Manager is, okay, what Tag Manager is, is a container and a container that can hold anything you want. So it can hold your Google Analytics code, your Google Search Console code, your Bing code, you know, whatever code you wanna deploy. So uh, you should all have Tag Manager in, uh, deployed on your website no matter what. It's like you log into a backend, they give you a piece of code you put on your website and it allows you to deploy all your other code on any page that you want. Makes it super easy to send out Facebook pixels and stuff like that. So definitely do Tag Manager. If you don't have it set up, you should. The main benefit of it is it gives you more flexibility. It's way easier than putting code like inside of the code of your website. And it makes your um, site faster too because you're not deploying all these different scripts. It's one script that deploys them all. Okay. That's great actionable advice. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so before we round up, how are we doing for time? We're still okay. Um, we're going to skip past the movie. I know we talked about it in the pre-interview, but I think that's going to be just so the concept of making a movie would be so overwhelming for the vast majority of people listening that they'd be like, well, that's interesting, but I'm never actually going to do that. Would it? You yeah. Did, you did mention to me um, that you landed Tony Robbins and Fox, I'm assuming Fox News or Fox something as clients. Yeah. And there's some good stories there. So let's dive into those. Okay. Well, Fox was the, uh, I worked on all the Fox movies. So like X-Men and stuff like that, you know, we would make websites for them, push it out, run their social media campaigns. You know, that was a ton of fun. Um, and Fox was somebody I worked with for three or four years at the last agency that I was at. So I was the main person on the account. Tony Robbins is, um, yeah, we landed him, you know, we brought a lot of value. He's been a client for six years, you know, his, his mission, all the stuff that they do is really near and dear to the business. They're a huge client for us. You know, I'm working on all their stuff all the time. And I'll tell you what happened. Uh, it was manifested the way that 
uh, he became a client. So I was like 25, was really into some of his stuff and, you know, I was kind of going through a couple of things and I wanted some motivation. I wanted some life purpose. That's kind of how I came up with digital marketing as my mission, you know, to help people in the, you know, the community and, you know, reinvesting client success, employee success in the community. So I sent out a tweet and I sent out a tweet to Tony Robbins I said, I'd love to do your SEO. We were doing mostly SEO back then. What uh, year was this? This is like 2013. Okay. 2014, a year later, we get an RFP. So an RFP comes in and guess who it's from? Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. RRI, Robbins Research International. So I work all weekend on it, just put a ton of effort into it, ton of time, ton of energy. You know, I, I loved a lot of the stuff. And then um, their team comes in, they come in, they say, John, this RFP was so well done. I can tell you know so much about the brand. Um, we're ready just to sign up right now. This is just a formality, which has never, ever happened to me for an RFP before. So they became a client. And it, again, it's been about six years. And then since then, um, you know, we've helped them with so much stuff, launching books, content marketing, running all their paid media, email campaigns, a lot of the stuff in the forecaster method comes from the frameworks that we've built for multi-channel marketing around the stuff that we've done for Tony. We've been able to consistently scale that business. And then, yeah, it's just turned a great relationship. So now we're launching his new book with pa uh, Peter Malouk, who's from Creative Planning, which is this really great um, company that does financial planning and uh, that's going really well it's on Amazon uh, and uh, it's uh, one of the one of the top books I think it's number two right now in retirement planning um, so yeah it's just it's fun to work with him I love the mission driven organization stuff um, all the surrounding businesses and uh, and so that's that story cool. who knew that sending a single tweet would result in such a tremendous outcome you know what you should Everybody listening, give it a shot. I sent out a tweet the other day. I said, hey, uh, I'm looking to buy a business. I had, you know, I had four people who reached out to me and now I'm talking to people about purchasing businesses and new business partners. A, a, a tweet is very powerful. So, <laughs> Do you have a lot of followers on your Twitter account or did you use hashtags? Like, How did you get visibility on the tweet? I got a, about 180,000 followers. So there's a, a good amount of people there. Okay. And how did, how did you accumulate 180,000 followers? That doesn't happen by accident. Uh, I've been doing digital marketing for a while, right? So it's like uh, something I've, I've worked on. I, I've, I've worked on my own personal brand, you know, a good amount. And, um, you know, really as far as Twitter goes, uh, I've spoken at a ton of events. I've uploaded, you know, email lists that I've, I've, I've captured email addresses there and, and connected with those people, connected with pretty much everybody I've met, um, and then consistently just interacted with people on Twitter. Um, I'm also, you know, a writer for, you know, Entrepreneur, Forbes, Inc., you know, um, all these different publications, search engine land, marketing land, search engine journal, as well as our own blog, you know, gets a couple hundred thousand visitors a month. So it all just kind of accumulated together sure. uh, to, to get a following. And, and for anyone who's listening, who would be like to become a contributing writer for publications like those that you just listed, obviously I'm assuming, well, not obviously I'm assuming there's a little bit of a flywheel effect and that once you get one, it makes getting the second and the third and the fourth a little easier. What advice would you give someone who isn't yet a contributor to a popular um, uh, website or magazine like that? And they were trying to get their foot in the door. Yeah. So it's, um, I think you, you started on it pretty well. So the first thing you do is you want to start on your own blog, start on your own blog, build a little following, a good author profile, some stuff that you're really, really proud of and build a little bit of a portfolio. And that's what I did at the last company I worked at. You know, I took, I blogged there, you know, multiple times a day, took it to, you know, uh, 20, 30,000 visitors a month. And, uh, and then I used that and I went to search engine land and I said, Hey, search engine land, look, I'm a great blogger. I'd love to write for you. I'm a director. I'm a blogger. I'd love to write for you. Then I went, to search engine journal. They started letting me write. Um, you know, then I, I launched Ignite. I started, I already had those profiles, which is great because I could use them to, for more thought mm -hmm. leadership. And then I had those two. And then I went to, you know, Inc and Entrepreneur and, and it just kind of snowballed from there. 
You know, I will say the national publications are super, super hard and they're a big commitment too. So they want you to write like weekly and the approval processes are super, super slow um, for some of them. So it's like a job. So I would say before you do it, you know, make sure you're willing to work for free, you know, basically for a job and you see value in it. Uh, Cause it's, it's a lot, you know, at one point, honestly, at one point I had, you know, I could write at every major publication. I still can um, for, for, you know, many of them, but it just became so much where I was writing so many blogs and so much content. I started looking at kind of like the ROI of it yeah. and, and trying to decide what I should really do. And, and I pulled back a little bit. I started just focusing more on our own marketing. And so I would just say maybe one piece of advice would be, you know, I think maybe 80% what you do, another 20%, pick one or two publications you really like, you'd like to contribute to, you like the people, and that's yeah. probably going to be a good way to go. The name of your second book is what? Remind us. So it's Digital Influencer, which actually teaches you all that stuff we just went over. It, should, it actually has lists and how to reach out and become contributors and all of that. I mean, it's something anybody can do. So Digital Influencer, the second one is the Forecaster Method, and they're both on Amazon. Are they available in Audible? Yeah, they're both in Audible as well. Oh, nice. So for, you've done a fantastic job of sharing some really great information with the audience and myself, and I want to thank you for that before we wrap up. I'm sure that some of the people listening might be thinking, hey, maybe I'd like to work with that firm. He seems to know what he's doing. What does your customer profile look like? Who do you work best with? We, we work with people who want to be number one in the space and can be or who are number one in the space. We're across all different types of industries, you know, from huge companies like Cox and, you know, five hour energy and Tony Robbins and the general auto insurance all the way down to, you know, businesses that are a couple million bucks. Usually we start with businesses that are around, you know, two to 5 million or something like that, just because, of, um, you know, fees and business maturity and size and stuff like that. We do do some new product launches, but, you know, what we do is we run every client who signs up through a forecast. We develop a, a free digital marketing plan for them if we feel like it's qualified. So we'll do like the forecast, the strategy, the timeline, the project plan. We don't charge you anything for that. And then we will only sign you up if we mutually agree that it's going to be a good fit. Um, we get a ton of inquiries and, and, you know, there's a ton of options out there. So we really like to have mutual beneficial, like long-term relationships. Um, but yeah, is, you know, everybody, you know, you don't need to hire me. I would just love to meet you. You know, there's a bunch of great stuff on YouTube and, you know, I'd love to connect with you on Twitter, you know, if you're interested. So. All right. Well, we'll make sure that we put links to your social profiles in the show notes. So for anyone who is listening, who wants to not have to go and manually look them up, just come over to the show notes and I'll give the episode number here at the end of the show. And you'll be able to easily uh, find and connect with John via those links. So John, thank you very much for making some time to come and be on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Thank you very much, Trent. I appreciate it. And everybody, listeners, Trent's a, a real awesome guy too. Shout out for all the amazing stuff you do. Thanks for having me on, Trent. How kind of you to say. Appreciate it.